the White House can drop the Build Back Better proposal. Instead, propose a bill to fight inflation with just two parts, cutting the deficit with new taxes on the uber-rich and cutting prescription drug prices. That's it. No more talk about child care, universal pre-K, and the rest. If Democrats can survive the midterms, they can come back for those items later. Cutting drug prices would be good policy and good politics. Let Republicans vote it down on the Senate floor. At the same time, the White House should hammer the 193 Republicans who voted last week against reducing insulin prices, many of whom voted to support a similar insulin cost-cutting measure under the defeated former president. Apparently, denying Biden a win is more important than preventing millions of diabetes patients from getting gouged. Here's how Biden can put it. Republicans not only want to scrap the Affordable Care Act, but are happy to see Americans pay unnecessarily high prices for insulin and other medications. I mean, come on. This is a no-brainer. Can you believe? Can you believe the Republicans voted against slightly reducing co-pays for people who already have insurance and need insulin? It's not like the Republicans could respond with an absolutely bulletproof uh, a counterattack that would nullify the entire issue to any swing voter who might, you know, catch this. Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, yeah. we want to lower. We want to lower insulin prices. That's it. Boom. I mean, like, why, like, why should I listen to you when you tell me that that's what they think, Brandon? Like, the, nothing that they say has credibility, so their accusations mean nothing. And the Republicans will lie. <laughs> I mean, like, the first thing Trump tried to do, like, his first major project after the Muslim ban and everything was try to just make it so your health insurance company could kill you. And it did, like, it took about 50 other things to get Democrats to take the House in the following, in the following year. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine why, uh, why Biden isn't doing this. You know, let's, let's, let's get those insulin prices down and, 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 you know, let's crow about it. But, I mean, yeah, like the, the, the bill they're talking about, though, was about, like, it was about co-pays for insulin. You know, I mean, so once again, in our idiotic, fucking barbaric private health, it's not exactly reducing the cost of insulin. Or better yet, having the government just produce insulin and just at cost and give it to people. We could Man, do that. that would be so easy. Yeah. <laughs> It is wild how easy that would be, yeah, yeah. relatively, oh, yeah. just in terms of dollar terms and infrastructure. It's doable in it's a way not, that a lot of the stuff— I, I, Insulin I, I, is not an mRNA vaccine, yeah. Like it, you, it's not just, like, hypothetically creatable. Like, the system we have could actually do that realistically. Yeah, it would be—you could even repurpose TSA people to do it. Even yeah. they could do it. Even they could work in the factory. But, I mean, it, this is another thing. It's like the, it, it's like the telemarketer calls. It's like anything else— the best course of action for everyone, for the most amount of people, would be to completely nationalize the healthcare system. Mm-hmm. Not like not Medicare for all. Like a, a single payer government health insurance would just be the greatest fucking bilking project of the criminal American medical industry the world has ever seen. They would bleed it of like three trillion dollars yeah. a week. Like the entire medical system is built on overbilling bloat, uh, inefficiency. In- inefficiency is the prime driver of profits in it create the best result for the most people you would completely nationalize it you would have an american nhs you would have the government make most pharmaceuticals if not all you would yeah have government insulin factories but again you can't do that because it's like well what the what the fuck uh now people can't get their associate's degree in medical billing and make yeah. seventy five thousand yeah. dollars a year as an extortionist yeah because well, you, wait, cause you, had, you know it's it, wild i'm sorry go no, I was going to say, like, uh, well, then you'd have Brandon Friedman piping up to be like, here's a bone I have to pick with national health care systems. If we give everyone the same medical care, what will incentivize people to get better medical care? Yeah, no, the like limited scope of Democrats on health care is I mean, it, it can't be anything but limited. Doctors seem to be like shittier than they've been since they worked at the barber shop, <laughs> <laughs> just by virtue that we're not making that many more of them that the entire growth of the medical field has been you know medical you gotta keep billers those, you gotta, uh, administrative you gotta keep jobs. those choke points narrow you gotta yeah. you gotta keep it so that those okay, people well, actually, on the other side of it can maintain their rent seeking capacity right yeah no, right because, but, but okay. no democrat no democrat will really like talk about it because it's like well what the what the fuck you're giving up the get this is one of our only things one of our only things is the is the uh hospital fun house in america that's one of our only profit centers you know what's wild uh, so by the 1970s, uh, when the technology of dialysis had become like sufficiently advanced, somebody who had like uh, chronic kidney failure could be kept alive indefinitely if they had access to uh, dialysis. Uh, and that, of course, 
is a problem in a for-profit sector because, you know, if you can't afford something, you can't get it. And we now have a situation where there's this disease, this, this kidney disorder, that if you don't get this thing, you will, not might, you will die. And so in the 1970s, Nixon passed a law basically exempting dialysis from the healthcare market and making it a directly provided like public good because it's not optional the way other healthcare is. But that's, it, 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 it's just because of like the starkness of it, but it, it uh, really un- emphasizes the underlining absurdity because all of it is necessary. <laughs> yeah. 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 And look well, specifically at like fucking insulin is the same thing. If you don't get insulin, you will die, will. So yeah. why the shit is this not part of this general uh, understanding we have that life-saving treatments have to be provided? And w- when the federal government or a state government says something is necessary, like in states where they say like children's dental health care is necessary, what that usually means is that the shittiest fucking providers for that thing that has been declared necessary will start like, you know, there's this trend of... Uh, children's dentist office that uh that bill medicaid that there was a awful case i heard of just this like fucking run down shack where they would just like drill ca- drill cavities for kids that didn't have cavities like 50 100 a day just to bill medicaid a few thousand dollars where they gave a kid like buprofen and killed him and that 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 is that is always going to be the result of declaring something necessary in our current system, unless you had like yeah a state run dentist office. Right, I should say and not just I should a say, Medicaid extortion scheme. Uh, the publicly provided uh, dialysis treatment in America is terrible and in, uh, filled with uh, incredible corruption and graft. Uh, but that's because it's just weird little mutant, just the same way that the VA sucks because it's it's not it's it's just this weird uh, offshoot of a general healthcare market that is just poisonous and eats the fucking foundation of everything it's fucking connected to. And I think what no, yeah, you have to, you just have to kill the beast. You have yeah. to kill the beast. And people love, people love like bringing up people. They never give a shit about when you say this. They go, oh, what happens to the people that work for the insurance companies? Okay. Get a new fucking the, job. Yeah. What happened to the fucking shit? What about the steel workers when they yeah. closed the factories in America? You didn't give a shit. Yeah. And you know what? Okay, fine. The lowest paid workers for the insurance companies, they can now work for the new American NHS. They can. Yeah, they can that's, like, that's going to take bureaucrats, for Christ's yeah. sake. The highest level, um, well, you know, if this is happening, we're living in my best possible world. So they're yeah, already been executed. Things. Yeah, I can think of a few things. <laughs> they're, they're, they're they don't the have to worry about unemployment. Superman. Right, like the, the actual jobs that would be lost to the healthcare sector, like the ones that couldn't be replaced in a public uh, healthcare system, are people who w- would should be lucky that they aren't in front of a firing squad. Yeah. And, and, it's and like, you know, who yeah. gives a shit about them? They're you know lucky what? that we let them live. And we, you know I, I mean, I don't mean I just I don't just mean like health insurance executives. I mean hospital CEOs. Yes, uh, of course. People, people who run these Medicaid Medicaid extortion rackets, like the children's dentist office, all of them killed or in prison. By the way, isn't it uh, as an aside? Isn't it hilarious that the single largest uh, Medicare uh, defrauder in history is in the United States Senate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after serving yeah. two terms as governor in the state of Florida. He's got, he's yeah, by the way. He's got a great plan to fix America. I mean, yeah, he's the one. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. Mitch McConnell is over here. Like, look, never interfere with your enemy when they're in the process of uh, branding it. So, just be the the no option compared to the status quo that everyone hates. And dumbass fucking Rick Scott is Leroy Jenkinsing his ass. In, uh, onto the field going like, no, wait a minute. Here's some horribly unpopular programs is, yeah. that ideas, everyone hates. His I, ideas I, I, include I, I, raising taxes on basically anyone who isn't a millionaire and yep. including, a, a, adding a sunset clause to all, fi- all federal legislation, which <laughs> would make it have to be voted on every five years. Yep. Rick Scott, a uh, horrible criminal, completely hostile to anyone making less than $1.5 million a year, only supports unpopular policies. But, you know, elected twice to the United States Senate, still a rising star just because of how handsome he is. Yeah. You know, it's really <laughs> you can, unfair. You can, it's true. Everywhere it, on looks. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty much bullshit. It's like, how are you supposed to compete against that punim? That's um, what seriously, so that's the other thing. Hi. Hello. He introduced himself to Florida as, hi, I'm a guy who got busted for scamming billions with a B of money from the uh, health system that you, senior citizens of Florida, depend on. 
Uh, oh, and by the way, I also look like one of the silent men from Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I'm actually a, a walking corpse. And they're like, sign me the fuck up. How do you lose a federal like, to a guy that looks like that? How? It's it just it, it shows you that like this Florida only happens the because answer. the because the Democrats are the only are the party that has the disadvantage in the current system of having to have a positive proposal because the undergirding assumption of democratic governance is, is that the government as it exists uh, could hypothetically be used to, you know, fix things. So they have to have an agenda to use it. Republicans opening bid is that it's all uh, actually the government is the reason things are bad and we should just dismantle it. And if there are problems when we're in charge, it's because we didn't get to dismantle as much as we need to. And if that's your fucking opening bid, you don't have to have anything to stand on. You can be the healthcare gargoyle. If you're the healthcare gargoyle standing opposed to a democratic status quo that is failing, then it's rational to pick him because, hey, at least it's different. Uh, just, a, just a concluding thought on the, uh, the, the evil that undergirds much of the American healthcare system. I think a thread running throughout all of it is uh, that doctors, sort of similar to landlords, maybe perhaps slightly more justified because they actually do do something important. Uh, they all believe that they're entitled to make as much money as humanly possible, and any exactly yeah. any any that's attempt, a God-given right. And like as like if they had to if they had to have like one boat instead of two, then that that's like no one would become a doctor. Okay, uh, here here's a policy proposal to fix that. Um, give like the VIP all access fucking visa and citizenship to basically anyone in this country of India who's graduated medical school to come to America yeah. and be a doctor. Bye bye cartel. Fucking, mm -hmm. Yeah, compete with those, compete with the, compete with 50 million Indian doctors tomorrow.